Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the Mona, Mona, Mona and Mark Show. Council. So whatever neighborhood you're living in, you likely have a community council. Go to tinyurl.com slash nattyhood and go to this and it has the neighborhood name as well as uh, the location when they meet. Um, it has other information, including their emails, as well as the websites. This is the affordable housing timeline. Timeline from 2015, when there was no affordable housing trust fund here in Cincinnati till today, when we have a affordable housing trust fund, but we're still struggling to make sure that the pieces of the trust fund are the right pieces that we need of advocacy here locally, but also at the state level and the national level. And those marches and those rallies have formed a new thought process on affordable housing and on how we can eradicate homelessness. Um, as we move forward and try to you know, continue to fight for um, housing protections and, and rights and, and ensuring that everyone has safe and affordable housing in our city. We acknowledge the people that came before, the organizations that came before that built this foundation. Affordable Housing Advocates is one of the biggest supporters of affordable housing here in Cincinnati. And they do monthly meetings and everyone's invited to go to the monthly meeting to learn more. They're the ones that came together back in uh, 2016. We're going to focus on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Did research by talking to people in other cities and other communities. The Affordable Housing Trust Fund is not just about the money that goes into it, but it's also about the policy around it that helps protect people and stay in their homes. In 2017, LISC study in Hamilton County, and there are 40,000 units short of affordable housing, which means that people are simply paying more than 30% of their income towards their housing. So we were bringing that message around in 2018. The city was then able to create the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Problem with it was is that there was not a dedicated funding source and there wasn't a board that would be able to spend the money. So since 2018, the money has just sit in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and it hasn't been spent. The need for affordable housing is around zero to 60% AMI. Coming into 2020, things started to heat up. We launched the Affordable Housing Trust Fund campaign, which was called Cincinnati Action for Housing Now. So in June of last year, Housing Our Future, which is a report, again, a follow-up of that LISC study, and that talks about different strategies to address the affordable housing crisis in the region. And so there is, uh, a link in the description of ruminations of the Elm and Liberty fight we're starting. And basically that pulled over into 2021, which is why in January, affordable housing was on the minds of our city council because we were at city council, make sure that there's affordable housing in our um, in any development that's getting an abatement, any development that's getting public land, that's getting height variances and density variances, all this public good, that they would be able to include affordable housing. Now, unfortunately, the developer didn't want to include affordable housing, but we did get $750,000 commitment to go into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, or submitted our petitions to get on the ballot for action for housing now. And once that happened, City Council had already requested a report from the city manager on affordable housing because of Elm and Liberty. The city manager wrote a memo to all 6,000 plus city employees saying, if you support issue three, you're gonna lose your job, was what would it look like if we cut 50 million? And they took that, the idea of they're gonna cut 50 million and turn that into the no on issue three campaign. Even though issue three did not pass, it did force the conversation forward. Important that we're all on the same page. Communicate, that is the key part of any relationship is having open and honest communication so that we can make progress. What are some successful examples of affordable housing? One of the, the strongest models that, that I know of is Over the Rhine Community Housing. Over the Rhine Community Housing is a great organization that's supportive and it's community oriented, meaning that they are working with tenants to make sure that they 
are gainfully employed or working on their resume, that they have uh, child care, that they have programming for older adults at the senior center. Um, and so what they really do is focus on the whole spectrum of life. So from family housing and youth programming to adult working programming to uh, women's, you know, and senior programs, right? So they're really focused on every aspect of life because everybody at every stage of life needs safe and affordable housing and they also have historic and new builds so for instance they're working on the perseverance on vine street they've also done the new builds the flats in west end they're also working on buildings now even in lower price hill so you know their their model is important for so many different communities because every community is is lacking in affordable housing make sure that the residents don't pay more than 30 percent of their income towards their housing where these murals are and you pay for parking there it actually goes to support affordable housing community housing is one of our our key partners in that holistic approach that they take is really showing that they care about their residents because it's not only taking care of them for the moment, but for the movement, right? Going forward, providing that um, support system that basically um, leads to self-determination and success down the road, right? Um, which then enables us to contribute to other folks who are in the same position, right? So it's really building community. If you haven't seen Rooted uh, OTRCH on YouTube, it's linked in the description. Take 20, 25 minutes to watch that, that video. It's an amazing video. That City Hall is a place where a lot of stuff happens and a lot of stuff happens quickly because they often work in emergency mode where they can get things through without the required readings for them. City Council passed the rest of the American Rescue Plan funding and there is about 10, about nine point something million going to affordable housing and there is uh, 6.4 million going into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, which is the largest single contribution that we've had into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. That the city budget draft is going to be released, I believe, on Tuesday. If you click on the uh, description, you'll see the city council calendar link, and you click on the meeting details, and it'll pull up what's happening at City Hall. So if we had voted yes on issue three, there would have been dedicated funds for affordable housing. We would have had just cause eviction protections, a livable wage guarantee. It would have been equity focused specifically around anti-black racism that people face in the city and making sure that we're fighting back against that racism. It would also be a community controlled board and things would be able to remain affordable forever. The housing advisory board is picked by the mayor. They will use that housing study to come up with the affordable housing priorities. With a lot of these um, corporate interests happening, we don't want that funding to go towards things that is not for affordable housing. But we <laughs> need to keep that focus on people over profits, right? We will succeed as a city when we put the necessary resources into the people, because when people succeed, then they are able to contribute to the well-being of the city overall. By joining This Week at the Coalition. So it's an email listserv, it comes out every week, and it quickly goes through what our member organizations are up to every week. So if you go to just tinyurl.com slash hoco news, and again, the links are in the description of this video, you can go through and it shows you, you know, what is our daily bread sharing this week? What is um, the Women's City Club of Cincinnati sharing, um, what is affordable housing advocates sharing, what is, you know, over the run community housing sharing, right? People who are looking for volunteers for, you know, who are posting jobs, people who are working, looking for donations. So it could be household donations to Bethany House. And you can go ahead and subscribe to this so that you can get it in your email. We are doing in-person tours again. Um, so we'll be doing the tours here and over the Rhine. Um, again, you can check it out on This Week at the Coalition because that's gonna be the place where you're gonna get the most information. Uh, please come out to these tours. So if you go to our website, which is um, cincyhomeless.org, and you go to our education 
um, web page, you can actually just post on there. There is a Google form. Just fill out that Google form and go to 513relief.org if you do need help um, with either paying your rent or your back rent um, or your utilities or your waterworks. So we um, want you to go ahead and make sure you connect with our listservs, the Homeless Coalition, This Week at the Coalition, as well as AHA's listserv at ahasensi.org. Um, make sure that you are um, joining your community council, right? So that was one thing that we, we've been talking about um, for a long time is that we wanna make sure that you're joining your community council um, because that is so important for that, that ground level information about what's going on with development in your community. We want you to engage in our education programs. We're gonna have our training. We're gonna have our speakers. We're gonna have our tours up in um, June. So some of those will be pay as you can or pay what you can um, because we want them to be accessed by as many people as possible. So go to cincyhomeless.org um, slash about slash education um, to learn more about that. And then as always, make sure you're following Street Vibes uh, on Facebook, following Street Vibes um, on the street. Make sure you're carrying around a couple of dollars with you when you're going downtown. Um, as people are starting to emerge from their houses, uh, make sure that you're bringing some extra uh, cash with you so that you can purchase or donate for a copy of Street Vibes from one of our distributors. Make sure to follow us, stay in touch, share. We're here for the convo and for affordable housing. Love y'all. Thank See you. Ya. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.